Professor Nigel Crawford is from the Murdoch Children's Research Centre. He's here with some tips. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me. How, uh, can we start with the difference between a fear and a phobia when it comes to things like needles? Yeah, so a fear is that you're, you're worried about it or you start to, to think about something before you, um, you know, go to have something like an immunisation, where, where a phobia actually leads to true avoidance. So people that have a needle phobia will actually actively go out of their way to avoid for example, having a COVID vaccine, but maybe also going for a blood test mm. that's been recommended by their doctor. So really important to do everything we can to minimise development of a, of a needle phobia. How do we do that? I imagine it's pretty common in, in young people. Yeah, it's very much sort of age dependent. So there, there are different strategies, but obviously for the younger ones, the, as you mentioned, um, you know, we're going to start with the 5 to 11 year olds in, in January with their immunisations. They have had their vaccines at, you know, three and four year old with their last booster. So they have been through this not too far away with their, their parents and, and families. So it's really about preparing them, you know, in terms of knowing that um, there are immunisations and we are going to try and vaccinate everybody to protect them against COVID. They'll be thinking about that in their family. But at the same time, for the younger children, don't over call it as well. Don't describe in detail the needle or what's happening. We don't want to get them too worried about it. And we want to sort of set up a process where they can go and get their, their vaccine, you know, safely mm. and um, reassure them that uh, it's all going to be okay. Is it helpful that we've all gone through this as a family as well? You know, everyone's in the same boat. I think that really is. I think there's lots of conversations around this. We obviously see vaccines as a way to try and, you know, move into whatever the COVID normal is going to be. I know that keeps changing <laughs> all the time. But it really is that community protection. We want the whole family to be protected. You want your grandma, you know, your grandparents to be protected as well. So it's about that whole process. But having said that full level, we've got to think of some ways to distract them. So uh, for the younger kids, um, there might be, you know, their favourite you know, show or music mm -hmm. or something that might, as you're actually going through the process, you can start to distract them. And if they've got a, a real needle fear, it may be better to not go to a big public, you know, walking clinic. Mm. They may be better going back to their GP uh, or even the, the local pharmacy, depending on what their process is, to try and do it in a bit of a quieter place if you think that might be best for your child. So while it is the whole community, we do have to be a bit, you know, nuanced depending on that, that individual because it's, it's, it's them that's being vaccinated and we want to do that safely because you need two doses. You've got to get through that first one, but maybe they've got to come back for that second dose. So we've really got to do everything we can to make sure that can go as smoothly as possible. And this really, it, you know, it sets them up for life as well because we really, we, we can't go through life without needles at some point, unfortunately. That's right. But the primary school is sort of a new place for us because I've mentioned that the children are immunised up to four years of age and then there's normally a bit of a gap and we then give some vaccines in year seven. So that's kind of the standard sort of time point. But obviously those that are, you know, grade five, six, a little bit older can generally talk us through, but some of them may have underlying you know, developmental issues or do have some fears around needles. So as mentioned, we do need to be a bit nuanced, but you're right. This is a group that we haven't always given vaccines to, but it is now a community approach. So I'm sure we can work on some strategies to, to help them through. COVID has, I think, been such a battle in terms of how much we tell our kids. Like they're living it too. They had to stay home from school. You know, it's very much in their life as well. Where is that balance between having some of these big conversations with our youngsters? Yeah, I think, you know, again, you have to d depend on the, the child, but I think being open about the conversation, just saying, look, this has been a big deal for everybody in terms of, you know, the disruption from, you know, working and social, but there is the individual protection. So by having a vaccine, you're being individually protected, but it's also protecting your smaller community, but also your school. And we know kids have been impacted by not being able to get to school and all those disruptions that happen in that social network um, and all those features. So I think we can be open about discussing why they're going to be immunised. It's more not getting too detailed onto the actual mm -hmm. process of the needle and what's happening. We don't want them looking at the needle as it goes in, for example. You're better off looking away and doing some things just to distract them, as I mentioned earlier. So just doing some simple planning. We do have a what's called the Melbourne Vaccine Education Centre where we have some resources for people to look through to think about how they might you know, approach it depending on their child. So there are some good resources out there that can help guide you know, families, um, as mentioned, depending on the age of their child or even themselves, mm. that they're also needing <laughs> boosters and being worried about the few, the other two people now coming up to boosters at five months. There might be people who are a bit worried about that, but we really want everyone to, to turn up when they're called to get their vaccine. So I, I agree with you. It's a really a, a whole of family approach. Never before has a, a smartphone and some headphones been 
so necessary in a public space. Exactly, exactly, exactly. We're trying to get off screen time, but I think this is one circumstance where we need to... Uh, 15 minutes, it'll be fine, yeah. <laughs> one exactly, episode of Bluey exactly. gets you through, and it's good for the whole exactly. family. <laughs> exactly, exactly right. We know, I, I saw a post from the BBC earlier that work is underway to look at alternative ways to administer vaccines. Where are we at with needleless delivery? Yeah, there are different vaccines that are given in, in different ways. So some, you know, there are some sort of intranasal vaccines as a spray, for example, or there's ones given with different patches. But un unfortunately, with, with the COVID vaccines and the current delivery, I think we're still away, you know, from that. So I think at the moment we have to really focus on what's our sort of current, you know, intramuscular injection and, and working through the strategies to do that. But you're right, there are some newer techniques and newer strategies which we hope might come through. And to be honest, things have moved so quickly with the mm. science uh, it may come, but I think for this next, certainly 2022, we're still going to have the needles into the arm. So these distraction techniques and thinking about how to manage both the fear and, and phobias are going to be really important. So distraction uh, at the time, conversation, they're, they're the things we can focus on? Yeah, and it's, if it is getting more to the pointy end, so if you truly have a child that goes through a really, it does end up being traumatic, again, you, want it, you can't force them. So if they really are distracted and you can't do it, that's okay. You don't over you know, stress everybody. You don't hold people down or sort of get to that level. That's what we're trying to avoid here because we do worry about that needle phobia lasting, you know, potentially for your lifetime if you have that bad experience. So if you are really struggling, there are some sort of strategies in terms of through your GP talking about some, you know, sedation. Some people even use hypnotherapy and other things to really work through it. So if you're truly getting into that severe needle phobia, there are some other strategies you can work through. But what we're trying to do is avoid that. But, yeah, be reassured that there are some strategies you know, if you do get a true severe needle phobia. Yeah, it's important to remember, I think, as you said, for all of us. So, Nigel, really appreciate you having this conversation with us today. Thank you. No problem. Thanks for having me. Professor Nigel Crawford there from the Murdoch Children's Research Centre. Yeah, 